Here at Zero House Productions, we've become students of mic preamp design, building and modifying several along the way, and learning a little more each time. We used to work from a kit or a set of plans we found on the internet or in a magazine. But recently, we've tried some designs from scratch, researching various components, studying earlier designs, and incorporating them into raw schematics, followed by circuit layout, design tweaks, and final fabrication. Since the last couple projects were vacuum tube devices, we wanted to try a simple, solid-state design this time. Enter That Corporation, an integrated circuit manufacturer that specializes in chips for audio applications. VAT's website is a treasure trove of design notes and white papers on mic preamp design, with plenty of ideas to get a project going. This project uses two ICs from that, the 1512 Low Noise Audio Preamp and the 1646 Balanced Line Driver. Using design notes from that and other sources, we were able to come up with a relatively low-cost design that has plenty of gain and sounds really good. Here's the schematic for one channel. We created this using ExpressPCB Plus. It's a free download that includes applications for drawing schematics and creating your own circuit board layouts. More on that later. Anyway, professional microphones have a balanced output, so the preamp will have a balanced input. The VAT1512 takes care of this within the chip, providing its own balanced input. All that's needed is a pretty standard input stage that can provide phantom power. The phantom power is sent to pins 2 and 3 of the input XLR jack through a matched pair of 6.81K resistors, R1 and R2. These limit the current of the phantom supply. Most phantom power circuits use resistors in the range of 6800 ohms to limit the supply current to the microphone. In this case, we use 6.81K resistors to ensure tighter matching tolerance between them. Switch 1 allows for turning off phantom power when it's not needed, and LED 1 illuminates to show the actual presence of phantom voltage. R9 limits current through the LED to keep it from going poof. R10 limits current through the switch to keep the contacts from going poof. Capacitor C13 is there to smooth out any ripples from the 48 volt supply. Between pins 2 and 3 of the input jack and ground, Ceramic capacitors C1 and C2 shunt any RF noise that might hitch a ride on the mic cable. Bad mic cables tend to make good radio antennas. Obviously, we want to keep 48 volts DC out of our audio circuit. In some designs, an input transformer would handle this. As transformers pass audio signals, which are AC and block DC voltages. Likewise, with capacitors, which are much cheaper and take up less space. This is why inexpensive designs use them. Here, for C3 and C4, we used 100 microfarad nonpolar caps. 100 microfarads is probably overkill, but the higher value reduces low frequency phase shift and puts the low frequency response in the single digit hertz range. Anything around 22 microfarad or greater will work. Besides, it's very difficult to match capacitors to such tight tolerances. Here's where R5, R6, and R7 come in. They form what that calls a T-bias circuit, which boosts low-frequency common-mode impedance. C14 is another ceramic capacitor across the inputs of the chip to clean up any remaining RF noise. By the way, R3 and R4 are there to limit any fault currents that might sneak by the capacitors. Their low resistance value prevents input impedance issues. Additional protection from stray static charges and other transients is provided by this diode network, D1 through D4. This is a simplified version of a number of protection circuits we've seen. A prime example comes from our Pia Electronics Tube Mic Preamp Kit, which you can see here. Basically, any ugly stray voltage transients get shunted to ground. Now it's on to the preamp integrated circuit, which does the heavy lifting in terms of gain, up to 60 dB of gain in fact. While a lot of designs will set the chip at a fixed gain level and introduce level controls somewhere between subsequent stages, ours is a simple mic preamp. It would be a simple matter of just inserting a potentiometer like VR1 across the gain setting pins of the chip, right? Not that easy. Turns out, Rapid changes in that resistance can introduce direct current offset in the chip. 
which translates to thumping and popping on the output. This is where C5 comes in. It's a very large capacitor to kill DC offset. Why so large? Because VR1, R8, and C5 comprise a high-pass filter, so the capacitance has to be large enough to bring the low-frequency response down. In this case, it puts it around 5 Hz at maximum gain, keeping any roll-off well below 20 Hz. By the way, VR1 is a reverse log pot, which provides the correct gain versus position curve. Speaking of high-pass filters, we included an additional one here to roll off any mic or room rumble. C6 and Switch 2 provide a higher high-pass filter, but this one has a twist. Special thanks to the folks at GroupDIY.com for this idea. Because the changing resistance of VR1 naturally changes the characteristics of the high-pass filter, this filter's roll-off actually increases somewhat at higher gain settings. At first, this may seem undesirable, but think about it. Low frequency artifacts are more likely to be a problem at higher gains than lower gains. At any rate, C6 is small enough to roll off low end, but not to the point of sounding thin. Now on to the output stage, handled by the VAT 1646. It's one of the simplest we've ever seen. One integrated circuit and a couple of non-polar capacitors, C11 and C12 are there to address any common mode DC offset on the outputs. From there, it's onto the output XLR jack, passing through a simple polarity switch, switch 3, to invert the output if needed. Finally, we added capacitors C7, C8, C9, and C10 to filter any high frequency gunk out of the power rails to each chip. A very important consideration in any design, clean audio has to have clean power. Here, we have a breadboard mock-up of the audio path with the two ICs. We're running this from a bench power supply. As you can see from the scope, it passes audio. As we turn up the gain and change the frequency of the test signal, you can see that the response is pretty flat. Now, when we switch in the high-pass filter, you can see where it starts to roll off the lower frequencies. If we change the value of the high-pass filter capacitor, like so, you can see how that changes where it starts to roll off. Since this whole thing is built around VAT's ICs, we simply decided to call it VAT Thing. Tune in next time and we'll talk about the power supply. In the meantime, follow the links in the description for the ICs, the ExpressPCB software, and Group DIY.